might come sooner than expected, and the National Guard is helping the community in a new way. This is OU Nightly. And thank you for joining us for OU Nightly. I'm Caitlin Deggs. And I'm Abby Bennett. We begin with the arrest of those the FBI says are responsible for the death of a U.S. Capitol Police officer. United States forces have arrested for the assault of Capitol Police Officer Brian Sicknick, which resulted in his death. Julian Cater and George Tanyos faced nine total charges, with several of them relating to violence against Capitol Police. The two men are accused of spraying an unknown gas in the face of multiple officers during the January 6th riot. These two are in just the latest in the over 300 arrests made in connection with the Capitol riot. A driver veering off the road kills three people in California this morning. Colby Terrell has that story and the rest of today's headlines from around the world. Colby. Thank you, Caitlin. Three are dead and six injured after a car veers onto the sidewalk in downtown San Diego. The 71-year-old driver did not leave the scene and attempted to aid those involved. He has since been detained and is being investigated for driving while impaired. The San Diego police chief Police chief says that the incident happened below an underpass where many were taking shelter from the rain. And in San Antonio, the owner of the Noodle Tree restaurant, Mike Wynn, is cleaning up after the work of vandals today. Sunday morning, he arrived at his restaurant to hate speech written in red spray paint. Wynn says that he is choosing to require masks and will only open to 60 or 70 percent, despite restrictions in Texas being lifted. Wynn also believes that these vandals don't represent Texans, and many from the community have offered to come out and help clean up. And now last week's passage of the $1.9 trillion COVID relief package is arriving sooner than expected. Some people have even received their $1,400 stimulus check as early as yesterday. And President Biden says that his administration plans to get it all out as fast as possible while keeping good track of every dollar spent. He wants to prove to the American people that their government can deliver and do it without waste or fraud. And I don't know about you guys, but I haven't really gotten my check yet. And I sure hope I see it soon because I've got some big spending to do. Back to you guys at the desk. Thank you, Colby. The vaccine rollout continues in Oklahoma as the spread of the coronavirus is slowing. The State Department of Health reports 310 new cases of coronavirus today. This brings the active case total count to just under 12,000. The CDC is currently reporting 7,486 deaths in Oklahoma from COVID. And many Oklahomans are lining up to get their COVID vaccines. As Colby Terrell tells us, administering these shots is a task that calls for some big guns. The Oklahoma National Guard's Joint Task Force for COVID is on the job at all times ever since the start of the pandemic. And in addition to their usual duties, they've taken on a new health job. Currently, we have 152 Army and Air National Guardsmen on duty in support of COVID operations in the state. Um, so we have, we have that going. That's the primary mission right now. Joint Task Force Commander Colonel Robert Walter is in charge of overseeing the distribution. He thinks the Guard is doing what needs to be done. The problem for him is the lack of vaccine availability. We're at the level where we're given as many vaccines as we're getting. So the limiting factor has almost become vaccine availability, not our ability to put it into people's arms. Many Guard members are out and vaccinating the public alongside the state health department. Some people are complaining about backups at some of these distribution sites. To fix this, private entities like Emmy Labs are also giving out vaccinations. And Colonel Walter says that as availability grows each day, he expects all Oklahomans will be able to get vaccinated by midsummer. Colby Terrell, Gaylord News. OU students are among those eligible for vaccines now. And Abby, it was absolutely beautiful outside today. I definitely agree, but I was kind of surprised at how windy it was. Nash Rhodes joins us with the first look at the forecast, Nash. Yeah, that's right. I mean, beautiful conditions outside to start the day. We had mostly clear skies, a complete contrast to what we saw this weekend. And like you mentioned, we have very strong winds paired with these nice temperatures, 67 degrees here in Norman, 74 down there in Idabel. When you factor in those dry conditions with those strong winds, we do have a red flag warning for many of our southeastern counties. This does stretch from Okmulgee County all the way down to Choctaw. So keep that in mind and practice fire safety for the remainder of today. This does expire at 7 p.m. Now, one thing to keep an eye out that 
low pressure system that's fueling these strong winds will eventually lift later today, but we are keeping it on a low pressure system that is going to send much more of a headache our direction starting tomorrow, where we could see some severe weather into tomorrow night. Coming up, I'll let you know where and when might see the strongest of those storms. Back to you two at the desk. Thank you, Nash. The Norman High Lady Tigers are back home today after winning the state 6A basketball championship on Saturday. The game took place less than 24 hours after broadcasters at a game involving the team used racial slurs against them. OU Knightley's Norali Jaiswal has the story. A video posted on Twitter by coach Frankie Parks of Norman girls basketball team kneeling for the national anthem received nationwide attention. Announcer Matt Rowan was caught leaving his mic on while commenting racial slurs during a live broadcast. Rowan issued a statement blaming his racist comment on having type 1 diabetes. He says, I do not believe that I would have made such horrible statements absent my sugar spiking. The NFHS immediately came out with a statement condemning the comments made during the game. A message from Superintendent Nick Magarno on Facebook shows full support of the student's right to free expression. Mayor Bree Clark shared her support for the girls through Twitter by expressing how disgusted she is by the racist comments. But that wasn't the only support they received. The players of the WNBPA released a statement saying, we are with you, you have our support. The girls also received a gratitude of support from coaches and staff from Norman and surrounding schools through social media. Hey, so just a quick little shout out to Coach Neal and to the Lady Tigers. We are in full support of you, we love you, and we hope you take state. Woo! Go! The Lady Tigers stood proud and courageous after becoming 2021 state champions. Matt Rowan will no longer be employed with the Broadcast Association. And there is new hope for some Oklahomans who have struggled to get the vaccine. Find out how they are finally getting that precious shot in the arm coming right up. Plus, an intense sandstorm hit China's capital city. Why scientists are so concerned? Straight ahead on OU Nightly. The Johnson & Johnson vaccine is now available in Oklahoma. The one-dose shots are earmarked for those with a disability or other health issue that makes it hard for them to travel. For some, this vaccine means that normalcy is right around the corner. It's a relief. Uh, people are getting this. It's going to make a difference, and hopefully the number is going to continue to go down. We can support each other. Um, I don't think we'll ever get back to where we were, but I do think we're able now to at least readjust our lives. Johnson & Johnson plans to ship 100 million doses of its vaccine across the nation by late June. And more than 400 flights out of China's capital have been canceled due to the worst sandstorm in over a decade. Emma Sears has that story and more in today's Earth Report. Sand and dust have overtaken Beijing, turning the sky into an eerie shade of orange and obscuring the sights of buildings. The city of 21.7 million people has long battled pollution, but this sandstorm has set off alarm qualities, alarm bells. The dust is loaded with dangerous particles, which can lodge into people's lungs and pass into their bloodstreams. The sandstorm is blamed for six deaths already. In Colorado, a record snowstorm caused major problems for drivers. Strong wind gusts created whiteout conditions, bumping a record of 27 inches of snow over the weekends. Road and traffic officials have asked Denver residents not to drive today so that crews can work on getting snow safely removed from roadways. A tornado in Lubbock late Friday caused damage along I-27. The damage includes several trucks that were overturned on the highway from the storm, as well as some farms and homes that were destroyed. Several weather in that area, severe weather in that area also include large tail damaging winds. Luckily, there have no, been no reports of anyone being hurt. And for those that are planning on traveling to Hawaii for spring break, the state is warning drivers to use caution after a landslide occurred over the weekend. Back to you at the desk. Thank you, Emma. And coming up next, the Norman Police Department forms a new committee to help make a positive impact in their community. Find out the goals of this new community committee, excuse me, and what culture they hope to create when we return. Plus, Nash, what can we expect to see from the forecast this week? 
Hey, well, we're tracking severe weather of our own. I'll let you know when it's going to be on Norman's doorstep coming right up. Welcome back to OU Nightly. Here's a live look at downtown Oklahoma City on what has been a beautiful Monday afternoon. We started with clear skies. We're starting to see a little bit of clouds build and we'll continue to see that throughout the remainder of today. As we look at our temperatures right now, though, 65 degrees, much warmer than we were yesterday with those winds fairly strong out of the west at 22 miles per hour. And unfortunately, those strong winds are only going to continue throughout the remainder of today. But as we look at our current temperatures, look at this Guymon and Woodward down in the upper 50s. Meanwhile, in the southeast portion of the state, Idabel and McAllister at 72 and 74 degrees as they do have a low end fire threat throughout the remainder of today. Meanwhile, further to the northwest, not the not at all in the same planet as the rest of the Oklahoma. But as we look at the highs for tomorrow, 75 here in Oklahoma City, 76 in Norman with those winds now out of the south at 15 miles per hour, and that's going to bring more moisture into our state, which will fuel our warm temperatures and a chance of some storms. And some of those will be on the severe side, especially to the northwestern portion of our state. A slight risk exists. This is from the Storm Prediction Center. This is a two out of five risk for damaging straight line winds, perhaps some large hail and a very low end tornado threat, but that threat will primarily stay to the northwestern portion of our state to get into the specifics on the timing of those storms. We're going to see tonight those clouds start to build into the early morning hours before they start to let up on Tuesday afternoon, not seeing anything in terms of rainfall tomorrow afternoon. It's not until the evening hours that we start to see the first storm pop up just south of the Red River and some of those could cause some low end severe weather problems, but the strongest of our storms will remain further to the northwest. We are tracking an isolated thunderstorm or two that could bring us some very large hail, so we're going to keep a very close eye on that. That will be Tuesday night into early Wednesday morning before this entire system becomes a line and moves further to the east, dumping lots of rainfall right along uh, really Oklahoma City, Norman and eastward is where that storm system will really start to organize. But notice we start to completely lose that cloud cover and with it will drop our temperatures down quite a bit getting down to 54 degrees by Thursday. It's not until Saturday that we get right back up into the 60s. Back to you two at the desk. Thank you, Nash. The Norman Police Department has established a diversity and equity committee to work on creating and maintaining a culture of diversity and inclusion. OU Nightly's Katie Arata has the story. The Diversity and Equity Committee is working to facilitate discussion with employees and the community regarding cultural topics and historical events. They will also audit departmental training and continue education to address cultural bias and gender issues. The committee is important to the city of Norman because of the diverse community the university brings. Norman is a pretty diverse city, but also uh, if you look at uh, the University of Oklahoma, it's probably the most diverse six acres uh, or six square miles that uh, that probably the state has. The committee is working to form trust and an open conversation with the community. They will work with marginalized groups, underrepresented people, and hear their concerns. The policing is changing. It's evolving. You know, and uh, as it evolves, um, you you have to change. The committee has come during a time where the community has a sense of distrust in law enforcement due to recent events, including the Black Lives Matter protests and the Capitol riots. And as for their main goal, the committee is focused on forming legitimacy and creating trust with the community to make sure that all voices are heard. Katie Arata, OU Nightly. The committee plans to hold town hall events to get the public involved. And Elise, I hear a member on the OU women's gymnastics team is in the running for one of the most prestigious awards. Can you tell us more about that? That's right. It's the Heisman Trophy of women's gymnastics, and it's only fitting for a Sooner to be up for the award. Plus, find out who Oklahoma will match up with in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Sports is next. Welcome back to OU Nightly. I'm Elise Jones. It was a busy weekend in sports, so let's recap this weekend's biggest events. It's officially mid-March, and that means it's time for March Madness. Selection Sunday was last night, and the Sooners found themselves sitting as an eight seed. They'll take on Missouri Saturday night for the 212th time in program history, but just the second time in the tournament. 
Oklahoma State was named a four seed, their best seed since 2005, and will face the Liberty Flames. As for the top seeds in the tournament, Baylor, Illinois, Michigan, and the undefeated Gonzaga Bulldogs sealed the deal as expected favorites. And speaking of undefeated teams, the Sooner softball team has been unstoppable this season. They're currently 22-0, ranked number one in the nation, and are averaging a dozen runs and 13 hits per game. They closed out the Hall of Fame tournament this weekend, run ruling Liberty 16-0. Staying on the mound, OU baseball split a doubleheader with Arkansas State this weekend. In the first game, Oklahoma struggled to throw a clean inning and found themselves on the wrong side of the scoreboard as the Red Wolves grabbed the win 15-14. The second game was a different story. The Sooners kept the bats hot and got revenge, winning 9-1. Moving on to the mat, OU men's gymnastics couldn't break away from the fourth-ranked Stanford Cardinal this weekend. The top-ranked Sooners only managed to win two events and tied Stanford with an overall final score of 409.3. Women's gymnastics has proven they deserve to stay on top. They concluded the regular season on Sunday with a big win over Iowa State. The Sooners currently hold 12 individual spots, including seven top-10 rankings, and are tied with Florida at number one nationally. This weekend, the Sooners have a chance to add a 14th Big 12 championship to their name. Some consider the AAI award the Heisman Trophy of Women's Gymnastics, and senior Anastasia Webb is OU's 10th consecutive finalist for this prestigious award. Webb was announced as one of six finalists. In her senior season, she scored three perfect tens and set or tied career highs on each event. And the number one ranked OU men's golf team is back in action today. The Sooners are playing in the George Hannon Collegiate Tournament in Austin, Texas. It's not too lonely at the top for the Sooners. After the first round, three Sooners were tied for first. And the OKC Thunder made a comeback yesterday against the Memphis Grizzlies. And they did it without three starters and on the second day of a back-to-back. -back. The Grizzlies had a 10-point lead in the third quarter, but the Thunder rained down three-pointers to seal the 128-122 victory. In the best game of his career, Pokushevsky became the second youngest player behind LeBron James to hit five threes and the youngest player in Thunder history to break the 20-point mark with his 23-point performance. And after 20 seasons in the NFL, 13 Pro Bowl appearances, and a Super Bowl victory, the Saints QB Drew Brees announced his retirement through an Instagram post. The post included a video of his kids celebrating that they'll get more time to spend with their dad, and Brees made it known that this is not a goodbye, but a new beginning. Now, if you want more sports updates today, you're in luck. Tune in to Sooner Sports Pad tonight at 730 on Fox Sports Southwest. Caitlin, Abby, back to you. Thanks, Elise. Now, coming up next, hear more about a day meant to bring you extra sleep. Find out more about this holiday straight ahead on OU Nightly. I'm Maddie Crawford at the OU Nightly Update Desk. Dr. Anthony Fauci has now shown his support of a new study. Fauci said that three feet of social distancing between children could be safe enough for schools to reopen. The study showed that decreasing from six to three feet with masks did not make a significant difference in COVID cases. The CDC is aware of this study in reviewing the data. That's it for now. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Addie. And Caitlin, today is National Napping Day, which makes total sense for it to be the day after we spring ahead and lose an hour of sleep. National Napping Day was created in 1999 by a Boston University professor and his wife to highlight the health benefits of catching up on sleep. The Monday following Daylight Savings was chosen because it is one of the most nap-worthy days of the year. Celebrate accordingly and maybe treat yourself to a little extra sleep. And Nash, what is the last look at our forecast? Yeah, I've got one last look at your St. Patrick's Day forecast. It is going to be a chilly start to the morning at uh, 40 degrees at 8 a.m. We'll quickly climb into the lower 60s for highs, but I want to draw your attention to one thing, especially if you have any outdoor plans in Oklahoma City or downtown Norman. Look at this. Those winds 20 to 25 miles per hour throughout the afternoon and the evening hours. So it is a jacket 
uh, mandatory day. Highly recommend throwing on a jacket just to break apart that wind and keep you just a little bit warmer. Meanwhile, we will have a front roll through Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, and then throughout the rest of the week, we dive into the 50s before returning back into the 60s on Saturday. Thanks for tuning in to OU Nightly. We're live every weekday from Gaylord Hall on the campus of the University of Oklahoma. We'll see you back here tomorrow night, live at 4.30. Good night.